Hi and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today we take a look at a Zin 104, which is actually the second Zin I have handled in my life. The first one was the 556 and that watch was the quintessential Zin when it comes to styling. This on the other hand is different, but still full of the same DNA. Now let's cover the basics. The watch is 41 millimeters in diameter with a lug to lug of 47.5, making it pretty much perfect for my wrist when it comes to this type of a watch. The thickness is also a very reasonable 12 millimeters, making it sit a low and balanced. It comes with sapphire crystal on both the front and the back and is powered by the Salida SW220 that beats at 28,800 BPH and features both hacking and hand winding. Now, despite being a pilot's watch, it comes with a signed screw-in crown helping it achieve 20 bar or 200 meter water resistance and something called low pressure resistance, preventing the crystal to pop out in case of a sudden pressure drop in the pilot's cabin. I actually like that feature, not because I find it particularly useful in everyday life, but because it shows the attention to detail they have given this watch. The feature I do find very useful is the bezel. What I love about it is the fact it's a count down bezel, not the usual count up we see on divers watches. It is also bi-directional, making for a faster and easier setup. Unlike a divers bezel that helps you keep track of elapsed time, this helps you see how much time you have left, which is something we use more in our daily life, if nothing else than for cooking. It comes with 60 clicks, and although 60 clicks are usually associated with lower quality and 120 click bezels are considered better, as they give a nicer feel, this bezel proves that 60 clicks can not only be as good, but better than most 120 click bezels out there. It gives a really nice feeling of quality and precision, even though it's slightly harder to grip. The insert has aluminium and features a loomed triangle at 12, which is just the way I like it, as I find fully loomed bezels tacky and detracting when it comes to basic time telling and legibility. And legibility is where this watch shines. The matte black dial with pure white markers and hands is kept as minimalistic as possible, given that the watch comes with a date date complication. So other than the time and date information, you get SIN inscription at 12 o'clock and automatic at 6, with a small made in Germany inscription at the bottom of the dial. The syringe style hands are not only the correct length, but the thin tips give an even greater feeling of precision. Even though I didn't think they belong on this type of a watch, I quickly changed my mind, as they simply work and go well with the markers. The crown protrudes quite a bit, but weirdly, I didn't notice it digging into my wrist even though I expected it to. The crown action is rather smooth, just like the 556, so I assume it's something we can expect from every Zin. The case is angular and minimalistic just like the dial. It is fully polished on all surfaces, and even though it works with the polished center pieces of the bracelet, I wish Zin made some alterations by at least making sides of the case brushed especially given the fact it has some beveling as well. This version of the watch comes on a bracelet that features solid links and end links. The links are held together with massive hex screws instead of pins, giving a feeling of over-engineering. It wears very comfortably and balances the watch very well. Then we come to the clasp, which is the only thing I hated on the 556. I'm sorry to say, the one on this has the same problems. Even though on paper it is great, as it's milled, features a safety latch and an extension to e for easy fit over a flight jacket, it is very hard to open and close. On the 556, the safety latch was hard to open, as it didn't have a notch in the clasp to fit your finger in. And even though this has the same notchless safety latch, this one opens more easily. But once you open that, opening the clasp itself is incredibly hard, as it's a friction clasp. And on this example, the fit is so snug, I have a feeling I'm going to break it whenever I try to open it. Maybe I got spoiled by push-button clasps, but I really think a watch at this price point should come with a more refined solution. A Seiko Monster with its stamped clasp is on another level compared to this. Since this is the second Zin I handled that has the same problem, I googled the issue and sure enough there are a lot of people complaining about it. So what can I say in conclusion?
This is a very good pilot's watch with a perfect size for smaller wrists. Incredibly legible and beautifully built. It is let down by the annoying clasp that also lets the excellent bracelet down. Now if this watch costed five to eight hundred dollars, I wouldn't care about that issue. But at sixteen hundred, this is unacceptable, at least in my opinion. Especially given the amount of micro brand offerings that come with the same movement and ceramic or sapphire bezel insert for less than half the price of this. Zin should really reevaluate their pricing or up their game. But before all that, they should definitely fire the guy in charge of the clasp design. Well, that's it when it comes to this week's review. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.